Hi my friends, in this video, we will see how PCA reduces dimensionality on your dataset. Check this out. Why do we need dimensionality reduction? Mostly, dimensionality reduction is used for visualization. Since we human beings only can see the data on one dimension, two dimension, or the three dimension, that's it. If the data points are in the more than three dimensional space, you will need dimensionality reduction for data visualization. Dimensionality reduction also being used for reducing noise. You can find the PCA actually reduce noise on image. Also, it will preserve useful information in low memory. That said, you will save time and memory while you are working on reduced dimension data. In this video, I will demonstrate the PCA, which is one of most powerful dimensionality reduction algorithm. Okay, here's two dimensional space and there are red dots. How we can reduce the two dimension to one dimension here? If I don't know PCA, I would just put the data on one of axis in this plot. For example, on X1 axis in this example, you can see I put all the red dots on the X1 axis here. But did you find the, there are overlaps between two dots here? And there's overlap here as well, and uh, you can find these two dots also yeah, overlapped. So we are missing some information if we put this data point in on the x1 axis here. So what about this x2 axis? If we put the, all the red dots on the x2 axis, all right, these two, two dots are good, good. And uh, okay, there's some overlap here, and uh, here, and this dot, and this dot also have some overlaps. So we may miss some of the information here. So how the PCA works? Well, the PCA uses more scientific way rather than using x1 or x2 axis by using the largest variance direction. We can reduce overlap and preserve data in reduced space as much as possible. See, so these dots are going to the largest variance uh, direction and uh, there is no overlap and uh, you can keep the information as much as possible if we reach this line here. Here you can find the principal component variance is the largest, largest than the other axis variance. Since there is no overlap on reduced dimension, this should preserve information better than other axis. All right, so this is a PCA. I hope this algorithm was easier than you thought. The fact is we should achieve PCA in mathematical way rather than you do it manually. So how we can do it mathematically or let the computer do it itself? Here the principal component is exactly same with eigenvector in the covariance matrix of data points. So here is the step. You calculate the covariance matrix and find eigenvectors. And uh, mathematically, there should be two eigenvectors in two-dimensional space. What if in the four-dimensional space? Yes, there will be four eigenvectors in four-dimensional space. So in two dimension, you will need to select eigenvector has the largest variance. How can you select largest variance eigenvector? Mathematically, highest eigenvalue has the largest variance. Therefore, you will need to select eigenvector has highest eigenvalue. Once you select eigenvector, you can put the data point onto eigenvector by projecting the data point onto eigenvector. Let's practice exactly the same with my steps I described here. So here is my notebook and uh, here I imported pandas here so that I can create a data frame. So I'm going to practice with eating exercise habit and their body shape. So we have a column named calorie, breakfast, lunch, dinner, exercise, and body shape. So here we have 10 people here and each people have the calories per day and how many times they have the breakfast, lunch, dinner, and how many hours of exercise they are doing. And this is the result, the body shape, skinny, normal, fat. All right, and next thing we are going to do is to split this data frame to the feature vector and the label. Okay, 
So what we need is calorie, breakfast, lunch, dinner, exercise. So this is our feature vector. And we need normalization here because this calorie is much more value, much higher value this in breakfast, lunch, dinner, and exercise. So we are going to do the standardized standardization here. And the Y is label. We are going to put the label using the body shape here. So we are going to use this value when we are plotting this how many data points we have here, five dimensional space. We are going to use the PCA to reduce this five dimensional space to the one dimensional space in this practice. And uh, as I said before, I'm going to rescale this feature vector uh, using this cyclon uh, standard scalar. After we do this step, uh, every value here is going to be uh, here like this. So we don't have like this crazy 1,000 or 3,000 value here. Yeah, it, it has the standardized value here. And the uh, next thing we are going to do is have the covariance matrix from this feature vector. So we are, we are interested in these features, right? Features here. So we are going to transform the matrix first and make the covariance, bet, uh, covariance matrix. So here you can see I have the x standardized the x dot t. This is transformed matrix. I'm going to use the numpy covariance uh, met, uh, function to have the covariance matrix from this feature. So this is the covariance matrix. And we are going to get the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues from this covariance matrix. So here I get the eigenvectors, eigenvalues, uh, eigenvalues, and the eigenvectors from this uh, uh, covariance matrix using the NumPy linear algebra function. And here's my eigenvectors and the eigenvalue. And here the eigenvalues, the four point something is much higher than the others. The percentage wise is 73%. So I'm going to just use this one eigenvector. That means I'm going to just use one dimensional space from this five dimensional space. One, two, three, four, five. From five, di five dimensional space, I'm going to just use one dim dimensional space using this one eigenvector. All right? So next thing I'm going to do is to project this data point onto this selected eigenvector. So I project this uh, plot, uh, the, the red dots on the, the, the eigenvector here, and this is the value. So I'm going to create a data frame here so that I, we can visualize this data. You can see now I just have one dimensional space, one features here, and this is the label. And uh, this y-axis I get made because I want to plot it, but because the but because the seaborn only have the, the the 2D dimension, you can consider this y-axis zero is just one dimensional space. So I use the seaborn here and the plot it. You can see. In one dimensional space here, the you know, zero axis here, this is one dimension, right? I have the skinny here, normal here, and fat here. So rather than having this five dimensional space here, you can easily plot this one in better, di um, better visualization here. You can easily see which one is skinny, which one is normal, and which one is fat. So I went through all the algorithm of the PCA, but in practically, if you are working on some machine learning job, you are not going to implement the PCA yourself. You are going to use just scikit-learn PCA maybe. So here is the bonus trap. Rather than implementing algorithm yourself, you can just use the scikit-learn API, which is just a one-line function. So if you use the scikit-learn, the decomposition PCA, using just one dimension here, you can plot it, and that's it. Just, just a simple function, right? And you can see this plot is exactly the same what I implemented myself. So this is how PCA algorithm works, and we practice with Python using pandas and numpy and scikit-learn. You can find my source code from the GitHub here. And thanks for watching, and I will see you on next video.